Hey guys, I'm Rachel Lynn for Queen Bee of Honeydews, and today I'm out in my garage slash workshop slash sometimes studio, and I want to show you what I've been working on. Behind me you can see the cabinets that I just finished building, and when I started out on these, they were originally going to just be shelves, and after I got them finished, I thought, nobody wants to see all of my ugly junk. So I decided to go ahead and enclose them and sort of make them into a faux cabinet. And since I'm doing a complete overhaul of my garage, I wanted to break this down into several shorter videos. This first video is just going to be how I built the shelves. And I did this by myself, so anyone can do this. You can do this alone. You don't need anybody to help you. I'm gonna show you how I did it. And part two of this will be coming out next week, and that will be how I came back and enclosed these and made these into cabinets. So if you're interested in redoing your garage and you want to follow along with me, be sure to subscribe. And that space that you see right there behind me, that is where my workbench is going to go and some storage. And I have some really cool stuff coming up for that. So anyway, let's go back and I'll explain how I did the shelves. And then next week, come back and catch how I enclosed them. Okay, to get started, I'm just measuring out the minimum distance between the ceiling and the top shelf that I want and placing a mark along the wall. Then, I'm just going to lay out a level guideline along the wall for my first 2x4. Using that same original distance that I had from ceiling to top line, I'm going to transfer consecutive marks down along the wall. To get started with my assembly, I'm going to attach a couple of scrap pieces of 2x4 to the line that I drew, and I'm going to use that as my second set of hands. I'm going to just attach this first board just enough to hold it in place, and then get my level and check to make sure that everything is level before completely cranking down those screws and locking it in place. Then rinse and repeat. And just an FYI, I'm using two and a half inch pocket hole screws for both the wood to wall and the wood to wood attachments in this project. Now for this next part, I'm just gonna create a clone of everything that I just did. To do that, I'm going to attach one board over the top of my first. I'm only using the bare minimum of screws here and I'm not screwing them all the way in. The goal here is to get the two 2x4 two top edges perfectly flush with each other. Next I attached my legs to these three front 2x4s. I made sure that each one was perfectly straight and level and I screwed these screws all the way down completely tight. Again, for this I'm using the two and a half inch pocket hole screws. We do not want the screws to go all the way through to that back row of two by fours. But we do want it to catch firmly to that front section of two by fours. I repeated this process for all three legs, then removed the screws that was holding the front section to the back and carefully lowered this to the floor. Once that was finished, I cut out all of my support sections and pre-drilled pocket hole screws into each end. I attached these to the frame beginning at the wall end. I made sure that each one was perfectly level and used two and a half inch screws in the pocket holes and drove an additional screw through the wall stud just for good measure. On the side that doesn't have a wall support, I noticed that cranking down the pocket hole screws would cause the supports to slightly pull out of alignment. So I left it just loose enough that I could press it back into alignment with my hands. Then I lifted that front section back in place, maneuvered it around, and started attaching it. I had to make sure that everything was perfectly level at this point. And although I didn't use any clamps, you may find that some may come in handy. I was able to hold everything in place with my hands. This is where you want to take the time to double check everything and make all adjustments that are necessary to bring everything level and square. Now you've probably noticed that I have open bays down at the bottom. This is so that I can roll things into these bottom areas. However, I am adding supports at the bottom of the legs to make everything sturdy. I'm also adding cross supports centered at the location where my plywood seams will meet. I recommend that you have supports at at least every 48 inches and you should space them closer together if you plan to have a lot of heavyweight items on your shelves. Once I have that first frame built, I continued by transferring my guideline across the remainder of the wall. 
Now if you prefer, you can build a whole wall of shelving as one single unit, but I find that projects like this are a lot easier if I break them down into smaller bite-sized pieces. Next, I laid out the 2x4s for the remainder of my top shelf using the same process as I did before. The center section will be the future home to my upcoming workbench, so it will only receive a top shelf. The second 2x4 that I'm placing on the wall will be where my next shelving unit will begin. And you can't tell from this angle, but there's a door on this side which prevents me from carrying my shelves all the way across to this wall. So I'm building this cabinet at a reasonable distance away from the door, and the area closest to the door will house a mud bench area which I will complete on another phase of this project. And now all I'm doing here is transferring the measurements from my bottom two shelves over to where this new unit will be. And for this second unit, I'm just doing the same exact process that I did for the first, attaching my back 2x4s to the wall, checking to make sure that everything is square and level, and then attaching the clone 2x4s to the front. Next, I took a slight detour back to my first unit to add the plywood shelving. I think I just wanted to get this finished before lunch. I'm just using 3 quarter inch plywood here, and I am going to go back and nail these in place with my nail gun. You can screw them in or use a hammer and nails any way that you want to attach them will be fine. And then after lunch, back over to my last unit where I'm attaching the legs, same way I did on the first unit, making sure that everything is square and level. Then removing the screws that are holding the front of the frame in place and lowering everything to the ground just as I did before. Then I will go back and start adding the supports to the wall, beginning with this first one that will butt up against the center shelving. And I'm working my way backwards, adding the supports to the center shelving. And just like I attached that far support to the wall, I'm going to attach this one through to the first unit. If you decide to do this project, please be careful on the ladder. As you can see that I am taking some risk here with some of the maneuverings that I'm doing. Fast forward just a bit, and I'm going to show you how I add this front to the center shelf. You've already seen how I do the unit, so there wasn't any point in making you watch through that whole thing again. But I'm just resting this front 2x4 on the edge and screwing in one side and then lowering it down, tap it in place, and screwing it in on the other side, getting my level just right, and then tightening down the screws. The final piece for this part of the frame is to just add the support and then I can move on over to the last recessed top shelf. Once I got all of that framed in and finished up, I was ready to add the remaining pieces of my plywood shelving and then add the final two leg supports onto this shelving unit. Okay guys, so that is just part one of probably about a five part series on this garage overhaul. Be sure to subscribe and check back in with me next week for part two.